citation policy uh, using uh, DOIs. Before I get into that, um, I'm Giri Palanisamy, I'm from Harm Archive, and Raymond McCord, uh, the director for Harm Archive, is here, and have, uh, have many folks who, um, you know, who closely work with all these things, sitting right on the back, uh, starting from Stephanie, Sherman, Justin, Ken. So they're all here to help us. So, so I'm not going to take all one hour talking, so it'll be like only 10 minutes. And then uh, you're all going to uh, try uh, try to create a metadata for your data set or try to discover the own data, and we're all going to help you on that. OK. Uh, so uh, for, uh, for the PIs who would like to register their data product uh, with ARM, uh, there is a page. Uh, <clears throat> it's a data product registration and submission form. Um, so uh, it is available um, in one of the tabs. And you get into that page, and you can read a little bit background about uh, what we are looking for and whether your data product will fit in any one of these category. And uh, so why do we need metadata? In the past, we used to just take your data and then uh, spend hours or uh, days to actually uh, make it really discoverable uh, within the ARM uh, web portal. So, uh, but we would uh, like to get more metadata from, from you, uh, from the PIs. And uh, it will not only uh, help us uh, ingest into your data into the ARM archive easily, but also it greatly improves the data discovery and understanding and if you have to package your data in a form that user can understand uh, the metadata that you'll be providing um, using this data registration form will greatly help us. So, um, so the PI and IOP data registration uh, uh, steps include uh, you getting an account for this um, product registration form. And um, I have a couple of folks um, sitting on the back, Alice and Stephanie, who can create uh, an account right away in less than 30 seconds, I promise. And uh, <laughs> you can actually uh, you start use the form um, to actually describe your, your data. Um, so once you get the account, uh, you'd be pretty much creating a detailed metadata about your data. You can, um, I will get into that uh, detail next slide. But then once you have a decent uh, version of metadata, you will uh, you'll be able to save and submit uh, to the reviewers. And again, Alice is one of our reviewers, and we have two more. Um, so it gets into these metadata experts. They will uh, review uh, your uh, submitted metadata. And if there is any questions, they will contact you back. And you can correct it, or we can update it. And uh, you will be also able to upload your data uh, into the, through this form. Or um, if you have a bigger data, you would be uh, we will be giving you an FTP area where you can actually yet um, upload your data. So that uh, gives us kind of detail about your data, and then we will make it available through um, through the the ARM web portal. Um, here is a screenshot of the product registration form. And uh, we basically ask questions like, OK, so what is the data type? Is it a ESR, PI, or data product? Or is it a field campaign product? Or is it funded by other DOE projects, but uh, uh, you think like it will benefit being in, uh, in the ARM um, you know, web, web portal? And um, you basically um, you know, need to describe uh, uh, about the data set. And you add some keywords. And uh, contact information, both uh, PI information, all the co-eyes that are involved in creating this data product. Um, and then um, also, if you have any uh, data quality information, we encourage you to actually add that information as part of this form. And then uh, things like um, uh, space and time, uh, which, which location you collected the data, and how long you collected the data, and uh, any related citations. And if, if, you, if, uh, if you use any uh, specific analytical tools, we would like to have that information too. And um, you just need to save the, the form and uh, submit it for review. 
and I encourage you uh, when you start getting into this process, um, just don't wait for the entire metadata. Uh, just if you have like half of this, go ahead and uh, get started and save it as a draft, and you can uh, come <coughs> back and then finish it up. And then once you have the, the full metadata, then you can submit it uh, to the to the reviewers. Um, that's the, the ARM product registration form. Have any questions on that? Uh, as I said, like we have folks here to really help you out after after this 10 minutes talk. Um, so uh, we can really help you uh, get into the form and answer whatever questions you may have. Question, how many of you have a data right now that you want to give it to ARM? Okay. Okay, all right. So we will work with you after this brief talk. And getting into the, <clears throat> the data discovery, of course, like the, the metadata that you provide will greatly help not just the ARM and archive to uh, ingest your data, but also like improve the, the user experience. And this is how uh, we have um, our PI page with slim <coughs> metadata, but this is how is what we want to get into. And this is a sample, um, real uh, example from one of the PI data products where you can see all the details that I talked about, description, quality information, started, um, the time, temporal and spatial scale of the data, keywords and uh, parameters that uh, they collected as part of this data, and including citations. So it gives a rich content to your, your um, to data. Okay, uh, now I want to get into the, the data discovery and access. So, <clears throat> ARM uh, recently worked on uh, developing a new next generation user interface uh, to really make, uh, make the data <coughs> discovery and access as seamless or as easy as possible for the end users. So we call it as a data discovery um, user interface. And I'm going to very quickly show you a demo. Uh, so if you go to ARM uh, homepage, www.arm.gov, um, there is a data tab, and you need to click on that, and the very first choice you, you see is for getting routine ARM data, there is the data discovery uh, tool. So I say routine data, um, that's where we started with this user interface, and we are currently working on adding the PI um, products and uh, field campaign products. So hopefully that will happen within the next few weeks. And Sherman can say that. Yeah, he says tomorrow. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah. So, <clears throat> so within the data discovery user interface, you can actually look at the topics, uh, a broader category. Uh, basically, like if you if you are interested in our showcase data, or if you are particularly interested in aerosols. Um, or cloud properties, you you browse through this, or you can actually start typing. Um, so I'm going to say optical depth. So any measurement, you can search for a measurement for or an instrument or a data or data string name um, with a combination of start and end date, if you if you know. And what you would see is uh, for optical depth. Okay, so. Here are all the different uh, measurements uh, and uh, the data products that are available. Um, actually, you can, uh, this is the time grid that you can see the availability start and end date. And uh, what you see on the left side is all the different filtering options. So, okay, so I searched for optical depth. Uh, maybe I'm only interested in uh, optical depth measurements from Southern Great Plains. So I can actually filter it just to uh, just to the site I'm interested in. And if I know exactly which facility, I can even drill down further. And, um, and if I want to narrow down some measurements, um, I can do that. So, <clears throat> so as you apply these filters, you will see how the results are getting uh, narrower, uh, only for the selections that you are making. And uh, the time grid also allows you to uh, actually change the, the view of this uh, timeline 
So you can actually say I'm only interested in like you can put the start date as um, just January of this year, and then it will show only for that particular date range that you are providing. So then once you once you know um, <clears throat> which data products that you want to get into, so you can simply click, and then it will be added into the cart, and then you you log um, review it, and then log in. And you will see some statistics, how many files and how big the, the data order is going to be. Uh, but this is where we also display all the measurements. Remember, like the data streams, ARM data streams, contain more than the measurements that you are picking from. You may be picking from this user interface. So, so we display all the measurements that will be shipped to you as part of this order. But you can choose, OK, I only need these three measurements. And you can say, I want to combine these uh, <clears throat> uh, measurements in one, one big file, uh, or I want to have this as an ASCII output. Um, I don't know how, what to do with NetCD if I want to have the ASCII output. So those are the options you can actually uh, pick from this user interface. Again, we are making lots of uh, upgrades to this as we speak. Um, um, we are going to have some data um, uh, 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 binning uh, options and uh, merging options. So those are all uh, coming in the next few weeks or few months. So, so once you once you do these options, uh, you can actually simply submit the data request. And uh, let me see. I can show you. If I get lucky, I will see uh, an order ID. So. So right now, I place the, <coughs> the, the data order, and archive will fetch this data and uh, prepare the data package for you, uh, including the data quality report, and then uh, send a notification email to you. So that's the uh, workflow, how to discover and uh, request for data. And depending on the, the data that you are picking, let me see. <coughs> You will see if there are any data quality reports, if there is a problem with the data, you will see all these uh, different color code. Basically, green means everything is good, that we know it, uh, it's a good quality, and uh, the yellow uh, means there is a, um, the data is questionable, and if it is black, it's like unreliable. Um, we recently made a change that uh, when you order the data, we will uh, filter out all the bad data uh, points uh, from before we uh, deliver the data to you. But you can actually um, uh, change, OK, I need everything. So we will be able to deliver that too. Uh, but um, the point I want to make here is like you can actually simply click Any one of these, and if there is a data quality report, let me see, here we go. Um, you'll be able to read it right there. Um, so this particular one says data incorrect. So, and if there is a, a data plot, you'll be able to uh, view uh, view the data using this plot browser, where you can actually see one month at a time, and you can browse back to the previous month and so on. So you can actually um, quickly view the data plots before you decide if you want to uh, uh, order this data or not. So these are the options that we have within the, the data <coughs> discovery interface. So as I said before, um, we are working to add the PI data products and field campaigns into this user interface. So hopefully it will be available for you to, uh, this would be your one stop uh, data discovery and access. Right now we have a, a different uh, user interface for the, those other special data products. Okay, citations. So now, uh, <clears throat> now you, um, you requested the data and you received the data and you're writing a paper and uh, we would like you to cite our ARM data uh, using the ARM data citation policy. Um, 
which includes the, the use of DOIs. And DOIs, as you may, uh, many of you know, has been used by, uh, by the publications or publishers. Uh, now, um, you know, many of these data centers are getting into uh, citing the data using the DOIs. Uh, so we worked on this. A um, couple of scenarios. As a PI, you can actually, uh, when, you, uh, when you are working on generating a data set, you can actually contact um, ARM archive. Uh, with some basic metadata, title, author, size, and some keywords. Um, so we will actually get a, generate a DOI for you and then provide uh, the DOI back to you. So this will allow you to actually um, add your DOI right inside, say you are creating an NetCDF file, uh, you can actually put it as part of the global attribute, or if you are creating a CSV uh, data, or you can actually put it on one of the headers or something. So this way, whoever uh, is using your data in the future will be able to find the DOI um, uh, and then uh, cite it using the same DOI that we provide. Um, <coughs> the other option is to like, start use the ARM product registration form. And then uh, before we publish it, we will um, once we get the data, we will assign a DOI and we will make it available uh, through this uh, metadata that uh, you you started creating uses, using this online form. And it, it helps us not just the ARM pro program but also you. Uh, we will be able to answer questions like how many articles are using my data product. So with this DOI, DOI, we can actually give you the citation index and all those details. Um, and um, publishers like Elsevier, Thomson Reuters, they're all working on um, getting this uh, data linking, is what they call. Uh, basically, like if you're reading an article using their web portal, you'll be able, to, if they refer, uh, if the article refers an ARM data product, uh, you'll be able to directly, like with one click, you will be able to come to the ARM portal uh, probably land into the data that they are referring in that article. So it's, it's, it's very uh, important for various reasons, including uh, providing um, the, the list of articles that refers your data. Here's an example um, <clears throat> for uh, DOIs for the ARM uh, best estimate product. But um, so you, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you are uh, using ARM data in one way or other. So we would like you to cite our, um, uh, the data that you received from ARM. Uh, uh, how do you cite it? Every data stream page has a citation with a DOI in there. Um, but we want you to use a little bit more content as part of this uh, data citation. Remember, like ARM is about like continuous data stream, long uh, time series, and many locations. So we, wa uh, we want you to uh, not only include the DOI as part of your citation, but also the time period that you used and the locations that you used in the particular uh, publication. So uh, this will allow us um, to really, uh, for the future users, to uh, take them to the, the exact data that you are referring in your article. So we understand it's a little bit more information that we ask you. So that's why we actually created this gen uh, uh, citation generator tool. So all you have to do is go there um, and then uh, uh, fill out few information. And then uh, uh, the tool will provide you the, the data citation um, uh, structure or sentence, and you can just copy paste it and put it in your paper. And basically, that uh, generator allows you to uh, input all this information that are needed for replicating uh, your um, um, your data request. Here is an example of uh, data citation, uh, which has the uh, the program name and the title of the, the data set, and the temporal and spatial scale. Um, and the last one is the DOI. OK, so that's the citation part, and I'm going to give